So nothing new over here just yet. Nothing at all at this point, right? Um, we've got finish right over here. And now what we have, guys, is we've actually got... Um, We've actually, we've actually got a report that's got, as you guys can see over here, this is a product right over here. So this is our product column. These are our sales dates and these are our totals. And we see two different groups. We see a row group called product. So that tells us every single product is going to go on individual rows. And we have a column group called sales date, which tells us that in the columns, every single, co um, every single value for sales date is going to go into an individual column. Let's see that in action. You guys can see over here, every single product goes on a row. There's a label called product that was put in by the actual system just to, um, just to make it wholesome. We could leave that or leave it or, or, or have it over there. But if you notice more particular, particularly every, every unique product went into its own row. And that's the reason why on the rows it had the product group that we included as a row group. So you guys can see that. And then on the column groups, as you can see over here, every single column value went into its own column, AKA column group. So that's how we did it first. Now this report's unformatted, so it's ugly. We talked about formatting in depth. We'll do it again over here though. Um, and we probably need to add something. So we got all these values, right? But here's our challenge. Our executive needs to be able to look at this and instantly see who's been doing good or bad. And you see, in the real world, we're probably not just looking at five values. We're probably giving them four quarters or three quarters or three years or five years or something like that. And they need to be able to instantly be able to extract that, extract the meaning of that data without having to go through thousands of pages or go through every single value. That's our goal over here. So what we do is we're going to give them um, Edward Tufts coin term sparkline, a concise looking, a concise graphical display of the trend for an organization. Come back over here and I click design. All right. Now inside of design, what's going to happen first is I'm going to select the total column. So I come back over here and there's my total column right over here. So you guys can see that coming back. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it. And then what I'm going to do over here is I have an option right over there. I can insert column to the left. So I'm going to create a new column. This column is where I'm going to hold my graphical display. Now you see the key with the sparkline is that a sparkline small. It actually appears right and set right inside of the regular sales of the table just like these it'll appear somewhere in here it's not meant to take up an entire tab um an entire huge display spark lines are supposed to be small compact sources of information that instantly give you the idea of what's going on pow that's the beauty of a spark line so we come back over here first and we actually insert this inside of here we insert this um, extra column right over there right and then what we're going to do next is we're going to click inside of the product row. So the reason why we click inside the product row, just as an FYI, is because you start with the very first row where the data starts. These rows are just, um, are, are just labels, as we can all see, the column row, the columns are. But this row is where the data actually starts, so that's where we start our sparkline. And then what will happen is it will populate for every single value in here. So remember, the first value on the very first row group. So wherever the first row group starts, this is our row group. We can see that it starts over here on this particular row. And remember, we talked about these little, these little squiggly lines earlier. So we talked about these little bracket lines over here. And in the very first one, where as soon as the data begins, as soon as the labels end and the data begins, that's where you do your insert whenever you're doing some sort of spark line, because you're going to want this to insert for every single value within the report, um, every single row value that is or row group value is even a better way to put it. All right, next up. Now, once you finish getting that done right over there, what we're going to do next is you're going to come down to the insert tab right over here. Then when you click the insert tab right over here, what you're going to do is you're going to choose sparkline. Ooh, very, very interesting. So we've seen, we've seen some different things already, but sparkline, we've seen chart, gauge, data bar so far. Now we're seeing sparkline. So you click on sparkline. And when you first click, you might notice it doesn't really do anything. That's a little hiccup of the little tool. Just double click. It comes up after that. Okay. Now, once you hit that part over here, they're going to have us particularly choose to use um, the column and the actual column type over here. Notice all these different areas. When I click line right over there, area, shape, rectangle, these are all different graphical represent representations of the overall trend for an organization. 
Um, just personally, as a matter of preference, I prefer to use lines. I found those are the most effective for being able to really give my decision makers a view of what's going on in the company and for them to have a concise look and um, a concise view where they can quickly make decisions. However, in this example, though, they're going to go ahead and use columns. So I'll go with that just to be consistent with the lab so you can go back and do all the steps. So we're going to use a column spark line over here and we're going to use the very first one, which is probably the most appropriate. See, the key with the good spark, spark line and what's not really mentioned here, guys, is that they're as easy as read to possible, um, that they're as easy to read as possible. And what that means, guys, is that you want to avoid something that Edward Tufcoin called junk. Junk is where people put distracting pictures and all kinds of funny 3D art and you name it inside the reports, which looks really cool. It does, but it distracts people from the main data and the main decision making. There's a fine line between beauty and between chart junk, as Edward Tuff called it. So going simple is always the best. That's why I love these little lines like this, because they're simple. They get the point through and bam, my decision makers can make their quick decisions. Here, though, um, what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to choose the column and then I'm going to click OK.